Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100 pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. Have you ever been so gripped with fear that you literally could not move? Have you ever been in a situation where you are asleep at night and you hear something in the other room, not just at the door, not breaking through the door, but someone rummaging around as if they're going through your things? Or maybe, and this is the one I think my husband and I feel is the worst we've ever had. This is back when we were still dating, and there was a popular place at the university where we were, where cars would go and park, and it was under an old railroad trestle, and I know we shouldn't have been there. I mean, after all, he even had an apartment. We could have gone back there if we wanted to do some hugging and kissing, you know what I mean. But no, everybody went there after we had had a concert, and then, you know, it's just kind of he would then take me back to the dorm, and that would be it. Well, on this particular night, we were just starting. He had pulled the car seat, the front bench seat of his old 1957 yellow Chevy. Wow, I love that car. He had pulled it back a little bit, and he had taken his glasses off. And we were just into that first smooch when, rap, rap, rap on the window. And we looked up and there was this guy that we thought looked like he had just escaped from prison. And all he could say to us was, you got a jack? And my husband, without even thinking, turned toward him and said, "Um, no, I'm sorry, I don't carry one. He said, why don't you get out and look in your trunk and see if you might have one in there? And of course, We knew that if he got out, who knows? He could have been hit over the head or mugged or who knows? We were just so afraid. That's just, it wasn't said in a way like, hey, buddy, I'm sorry. You know, I just broke down my knee, you know, my flat tire, whatever. But instead, real threateningly, like if you don't, and I mean, as soon as he said, oh, I'm sorry, I know I don't have one. This guy picked up a giant rock lying in the ro- in the road by the in the gravel road where we were, and he started pounding the window like he was going to break it. And my husband put this old thing in gear. It was a four in the floor or maybe a three on the column. I don't know what it was, but we zoomed out of there, scattering rocks. And this guy followed us. We could see in the rearview mirror he wasn't the only one in his car. And I mean, we were starting to really tremble. I was just I absolutely could not speak. I wasn't screaming. I wasn't freaking. I wasn't telling him, turn here, do this. I was just frozen. I just knew that I was breathing my last breath. And as soon as we got past the trestle, I mean, it seemed like all the other cars had already gone. This place was usually packed and there was nobody else out there but the two of us. And when we hit that black top road and swerved to the right, he still kept after us, but at least we knew we could probably outrun him. And we got to another road, turned on it, and immediately he was gone. Oh, my heart was pounding. I mean, pounding. Well, of course, we didn't have cell phones back then, so we had to go back to his apartment, which wasn't too far, and called the police. And they came over and took a statement, asked exactly where we were, all the details. And he said, have you all not been warned not to go out there? And we said, well, yeah, you know, nobody should go out there and park. And he said, no, I don't mean that. He said, in the last couple of weeks, there have been robberies and one carjacking and one death. What? What? And they hadn't been able to catch the guy? Why wasn't there somebody else out there pretending to park that was really a campus detective or something? But instead, we were the guinea pigs. Well, as far as we know, they never found him. We couldn't have made an ID anyway in that dark, you know, the blackness of the night. And it was just one of those freaky things where from that point on, I mean, we never parked again, even after we were married. (laughs) But when you have the fear that is gripping you, from something physical like that, you can run from it if you can, or you, you can confront it. 
The kind of fear that most of us face today is a different kind of fear, especially with COVID. Most of us are afraid of what's going to happen in the future with this virus. Are we going to be able to get the vaccination? Should we take them? What about our children and grandchildren growing up in a society that we never grew up in? It's going to be horrible for them. Will there even be a future for them? We can go on and on, but the fear that really gets us is the fear of the unknown. Even more than fear of death or fear of snakes or fear of heights or fear of public speaking, fear of the unknown just grips us. When you're in complete darkness and there's nothing you can do and you have absolutely no way out, so you think you may either perish or you can do what many of us have learned to do, and that is to pray. Now, before you cut me off here with pray, oh no, we're going to have one of those prayer things. Well, let me just tell you that there was a great guy back in the Old Testament, started with his fear as a little boy, David, who everyone was afraid of the giant Goliath, but he had his little slingshot and his stones, and he had killed bears and all kinds of wild animals. And you think this seven, eight foot man with big, ugly teeth was going to scare him. He said, I come in the power of the Lord. He didn't trust in his slingshot. He didn't trust in his aim. He was already at that young age, trusting in the Lord. In Psalm 34, 4, he said, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Now, I know I can't deliver you from your fears, and I know that we hear all of these media reports and how everybody's on edge and we're just gripped in fear and who knows what's coming from another type of a strain of virus and everybody's going to die and the sky is falling and the earth is caving in. Well, these words that were written by David back in Psalm 34, where he says, the Lord is with me, he wrote these while he was running in fear. This was as an adult now, and he had become fearful of the king of Gath, and he was so fearful that he pretended to be insane, drooling and scratching on doors and trying to get everybody to leave him alone because they thought he was out of his mind. But it only got him in more trouble and another problem, and he ended up hiding in a cave where he became the commander later of 400 distressed, discontented, and indebted men who were also living in that same cave in fear. If you want to read this story, it's in 1 Samuel 22, and it is great. But there's one thing that he used throughout his life to confront fear when he was by himself. Now, I don't know if you could do this. Maybe you could when somebody's after you, or maybe we could have done this when the guy was hammering on the window and trying to break it. But David began the psalm by praising and lifting the name of the Lord. And you know, fear begins to leave us when we take our eyes off of our problem and focus on the one that we need to praise and thanks that has brought us this far. And it seems like somehow our whole perspective on the situation can change. Now, it may not be immediate. You may not immediately go, oh, thank you, God, I'm not afraid anymore. No, you may still feel that churning and those knots in your stomach. But when we focus on how great God is, that he's doing something in this, there is no doubt that in the midst of this virus and this angst and all of these riots and all of this political unrest and hatred and everything that is going on, If you read in the prophetic books in the Old Testament, Daniel and Isaiah, it lays out like a newspaper article from today. And that's why we have to look into the New Testament where Christ had come. And he's the one that paid our debts. He's the one that can save us from everything. He's brought us this far. He's not going to let us down now. And in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Give all of your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. When you turn to the one that can save you, much better 
than any king, any giant, any bow and arrow, any gun. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Almighty God, we give you praise because you are so good. You always take time to listen to our fearful cries. You're always there with us. We have been told to cast our cares upon you, and we can trust in your power, and we can pray because we have the presence of the Almighty God surrounding us, and you are that strength that we need, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. So instead of screaming out in fear, God, I just thank you. I praise you. I give you all glory and honor. And I pray for my brother and sister that are listening right now too. I know some of them are so fearful going through such trials and adversities beyond even the COVID, many issues with their family or situations in their marriage or finances or work or their children and grandchildren. God, we lift these up to you. You're big enough that you can handle everything. You even know every hair on our head. You have numbered our days, and you know exactly what is happening tomorrow. We don't, and we can't change a thing about it. So why even try? And why worry? Instead, we come to you, and I pray for my friend that is in fear right now, that you would put your arms around them, that you would just squeeze them and lift them and let them know, just like long ago our mama or our daddy or our grandparent did, and just rock us back and forth and let us know you're there and you will never leave us. You have promised. And it's with that that we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend, and thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Peppers, shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.